Hi, I'm C, and this is my first guide for Conqueror's Blade. In this guide, I want to show you my favorite weapon class, the Short Sword and Shield. The Short Sword and Shield, aka the Short Sword, is a tank class that specializes in busting into battles and blowing up enemy formations. This is not unique to this class, but they just have that je ne sais quoi that makes them stand out over the others in my eyes. I'm going to assume that you already know the basics of the game, so I won't go through how to craft equipment, but I will show you what stats we are looking for. So, let's look at what they're packing. Let's have a look at our weapon and the stats you want. In order of priority, I would suggest 1. Blood damage. The short sword is all about blood damage abilities. If this doesn't roll high, start again. 2. Slashing Penetration This is the short sword's weak point. It needs special attention for regular slashing attacks to be effective. Then 3. Slashing Damage and Blunt Penetration 4. Strength and Agility Ideally, you'll want all of this if the RNG gods love you. It is easier to hit these stats compared to other weapons because we can't roll Piercing Damage and Piercing Penetration. But I have crafted a lot of short swords and I'm still unsatisfied with the results. I personally wouldn't settle for anything less than an epic silver scimitar. As for the epic schematic, uh, the armor set is kinda sad, so crafting the weapon instead is a much better choice. It's worth noting that the base epic Heaven and Earth is stronger than the legendary silver scimitar. And on to the armor. Here, you only have two options, Guardsman or Officer. The Guardsman set is the better choice over the Officer set. It offers a lot more survivability from the set bonus and is much easier to attain. The stats you want will be 1. Leadership 2. Health 3. Critical Defense and 4. Everything else. Obviously, you're not going to immediately roll legendary pieces with the perfect stats. So I have taken to focusing more on the health stats, as I can make up for the lack of armor by pumping more points into health. Ever since the introduction of bonus leadership, I've been slowly crafting a new set of equipment that focuses purely on all of the tanking stats, ignoring leadership entirely, so I can use and abuse them in deathmatch, free battles, and territory wars. So far, this has been treating me quite nicely as my special occasion armor. My formal attire, if you will. As rune choices change from season to season, I can only give you a beginner's guide to the basics. For starters, you just need to apply the stat bonuses to every slot possible first. Using the plus 2 and plus 5 stat bonuses to all of your armor pieces, you gain 13 overall, which means you're gaining 78 to all damage and penetration, 39 to all armor, and 1300 hit points. Once you've done this, now it's time to do some min-maxing with the other available runes. Sometimes, these 2% bonus runes can outperform the stat runes, so now it's really down to swapping between runes until you hit certain targets, which we'll come back to. The 2% damage reduction is too low effect to be worth it to me. The bandage runes are a pretty good option if your playing style requires it. I tend not to use them because I prefer to simply find a safe space where I can heal. Unless, that is, the season I'm playing has the rune which allows you to heal over time without going through the bandaging animation. That one is quite amazing. Pretty dope. Could do more of that. The changes to weapon runes each season can make or break a class, and unfortunately, the Scorpio season which we're currently in, we are left with very boring choices. Personally, I would go for this damage and defense rune based on health for general gameplay, and swap out to the ally buff on kill or assist for comparative matches and territory wars. As a bare minimum, you're going to need 900 to all armor, although anything over 850 is viable, and 1600 slashing penetration. 
Then finally, pump the rest into strength and or health, depending if you want to deal more damage or be even tankier. Once tier 4 and tier 5 units are on the battlefield, they pose a threat by having very high armor penetration values. You won't be tanky enough to mitigate this. And so, having a higher health pool in conjunction with your armor makes the most sense to me. It also helps you survive ballista headshots. Once you're proficient with your iron sights timing and you're willing to take more risks, you may want to go all in with strength, which is how I tend to play with the short sword most of the time. This is where the fun begins. For this, I'm using the most tried and tested setup for the short sword. This is a setup that I personally use most of the time. Although, it's worth saying that if certain changes are made to the other skills by the way of a buff or got by runes, it may be worth swapping out some of the choices here for them instead. But that can wait for the deep dive section. Iron Sides This skill is a must have for everyone who plays this class. Next to Thunderstruck, it's one of the most satisfying short sword's ability to use. And for me, the one that most defines the role of the short sword. Soaking up damage with this is what makes me feel like I'm a badass swordsman in an epic fantasy. It removes dazed and knockdown effects and deals a tiny amount of damage as a nice little bonus. Use the iron sights before engaging with a fight if possible, as it is your role as a short sword to charge in and soak up damage for the team. The current debuff does make you squishier by taking an additional 15% damage for 4 seconds, which obviously can get pretty deadly pretty quick. So you probably want to block or retreat from battle during this debuff before jumping back in. This is probably the easiest time to die, so don't be a hero. Shielded Charge This is your most reliable CC ability. Don't let the sword animation fool you. The slam deals blunt damage and is unblockable. Both hits deal a small AoE, so you can somewhat reliably knock down multiple heroes at once. Avoid hitting them head on, as they will likely block it, so hit them from the sides or the back whenever you can. This can be a handy little escape tool when used wisely. Just be sure not to bump into enemy units as you are trying to escape. Throw Shield this is the only ranged attack available to the class. It increases your own movement speed while decreasing the enemy significantly. It hits everything in its path, and as long as they are in range, it will hit your targets twice. Throw Shield has a nice short cooldown, so you want to use it to constantly harass opponents and chip away at their hit points. With Throw Shield, you can cancel your auto attacks to deal extra damage and constantly apply the debuff. This ability does work with assisted aiming, but honestly, I wouldn't use it, as you cannot then lead your targets. Your time will be better spent learning to aim, as assisted aiming only really works against non-moving targets. Good luck finding one of those. Anything that gives out damage numbers, such as heroes, units, artillery, and certain breakable objects, such as barricades, will give you the speed buff. If the current season you are playing in has a throw shield rune which improves its range and cooldown, use it! It's so good and I miss it so so much. Thunderstruck And finally, the one, the only... This ultimate ability captures the essence of the short sword as a class, i.e. run in blind and blow stuff up. Just like the iron sides, this is a must-have ability. It has a large area of effect and deals big damage. As you can see, it excels in breaking enemy formations and dispersing heroes. If the current season you are playing in has a rune which gives Thunderstruck some form of anti-CC, then it's a no-brainer. Getting your Thunderstruck cancelled by CC sucks and kills your momentum dead. Your horse is your reliable and true steed and a good boy. Unfortunately, the only good thing about the short sword on horseback is that the dismount gives you a reliable knockdown with decent enough damage. Block does nothing useful, as enemies tend to hit the horse instead of the player, which means you just receive emotional damage instead. I don't even have footage for the block because it is that pointless. So, in summary, 
If you're going to play Short Sword, your role within the game is to be the one to engage first, disperse enemy formations, and soak up damage for the team. The pros of this are, you get to break enemy formations, you'll have decent damage with good tanking capabilities, you'll be desired in territory wars, and you'll have decent block. And of course, the cons. You'll be a popular target for CC. You'll have poor CC recovery options. You'll be squishy during Iron Sight's debuff, and you're not good at PvE. In short, have a weapon that has high blunt damage and slashing penetration, epic silver scimitar as a bare minimum, aim for around 900 all armor and 1600 slashing penetration, use iron size, shielded charge, throw shield and thunderstruck as your abilities, use iron size before engaging whenever possible. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. This section is filled with my own little discoveries. But if you think I've made any mistakes or have any tips of your own, feel free to have at it in the comments below. Combos and auto attacks. The default auto attack of the short sword is terrible. The second hit does very low damage and the third one deals average damage but incredibly slowly. The first auto attack animation is better. It has a double swing which has better range and damage compared to the other follow-ups. You want to use his auto attack as regularly as possible. Your bread and butter combo is to rinse and repeat the sprint slash followed by one regular auto attack. This does consume stamina, so make sure you don't reach zero stamina as it takes a while to start regenerating once depleted. The second combination you should use is simply to chain the first auto attack. That's it, easy. For consistency, hold block, left click, Wait for the two swings to complete, and the minute you see the shield begin to rise, left click again. I find this the easiest way to time my swings. This combination is more useful against static defenses and the backs of shield infantry, as it deals the highest DPS. Here's a time lapse of me breaking down the front gates in Heilung Fjord using default auto attack, using the sprint slash and auto attack, and finally, the one where we only hit using the first auto attack repeatedly. It's clear to see the massive time difference and damage per second using these three methods. You can double tap the ultimate ability to make it connect faster. It won't be instant and the minimum distance traveled when double tapping is the same as a regular back roll or forward roll. There are certain quirks regarding how high off the ground you can use Thunderstruck. So as you can see here, anything that you can run across will work. However, Anything taller than the player's height will result in the ultimate being cancelled. Here you see why I advocate for 900 all armor instead of 800 or 850. The additional 125% bonus scales well with more attribute points. That's a 2.25 times multiplier. The difference between 800 and 900 defense during iron sides is an additional 225 making up a total of 2,025 armor, which makes you damn near invincible. Now, let's go over the other skills available. As I've said in the beginning of the video, if future seasons have made some significant changes or new runes get released that change the way the skills work, then you might want to use some of these over the standard setup we currently use. Shield Thumb. The Shield Thumb is the one I'm most intrigued by. It's fast, concusses enemies, and deals the highest damage of all the regular skills. With the officer set, this gets reduced to an 11 second cooldown, which means you can regularly inflict concuss on enemies. However, it isn't a patch on shielded charge in terms of offensive and defensive utility. Maybe I would replace through shield with this, depending on how good it was. Barricade. Barricade is actually the best NTCC skill available as it only has a short cooldown of 8 seconds and any struck enemies deal less damage for 6 seconds. I think the problem here is that Iron Sides and Thunderstruck already give us days and knockdown recovery. And once again, the utility of Shielded Charge and Flu Shield is indispensable. Kick! Kick is a skill that I actually want to use but could do with a rework. It looks cool as hell, leave me alone. The main issue is that it is so slow that you almost always whiff it as your opponents just roll out. 
leaving you with your leg in the air and vulnerable to attack. Centurion's Battle Drill. This is such a shocking oversight from the developers. I wouldn't use this unless they make some big changes first. The easiest way to explain this is to show you some comparison videos. Shield Thumb currently completes quicker, at around 45 frames faster for all hits to connect, deals 70% more damage and concusses. Crazier still, to complete two cycles of the bread and butter combo only takes around 21 frames longer, aka a third of a second, and deals 50% more damage. Centurion's Battle Drill is in need of a massive rework. Devs, take note. Did I forget to mention that it's on a 45 second cooldown as well? Why would anyone use this? This is just my personal wish list. What I really want is to have more variety in terms of how we play the short sword, as pretty much everyone plays with the exact same toolkit. More player choices means more variety and longevity to the game. But if all you use are the same 4 skills for every single game mode, you will get tired of it eventually. First, I want a rework of Centurion's Battle Drill, which turns you into a juggernaut of some sort. I'm thinking perhaps some sort of buff that grants you more damage and health for a short period. This does not interfere with the usefulness of Thunderstruck, but instead provides the player with another approach by being an absolute brawler. Secondly, I wish that Kick was as viable an option as Shielded Charge, simply because I like the idea of breaking enemy block and knocking them down. How about a huge dropkick instead, like a mini Thunderstruck? Improvements to auto attacks. The only issue I have with the auto attacks is how long it takes for the last hit to connect. It doesn't provide any additional damage or utility. I'm thinking somewhere along the lines of either more block break or just higher damage in general. Horseback changes. Blocking on horseback is a joke. Personally, I just remove it. I understand that cool abilities on horseback is more of a thing for pikes, spears and glyphs, and I'm okay with that. How about a short bulldoze ability? Anyway, those are just a few ideas I have that I think can make the short sword a little more appealing to play. And that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I'll show you the way of the free to play warrior. And we'll discuss topics such as unit choices, early level progression and much more. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!